remember singing that song years ago, you know, about the blood of Jesus. And a lot of, a lot of churches have gotten away from talking about the blood and all that kind of thing. And I don't know why, because it's not a bloody religion. We, most people don't understand why the blood. Why did God choose an animal at the beginning after Adam and Eve had sinned? You guys like learning stuff? Hang around me for a while. I'll just share it with you all the time. Will you tell that guy to be quiet? I can't get a word in edgewise, you know. Anyway, the blood is, a, is actually a shield. Now, I don't know if you've ever, have you ever cut yourself and smelt the blood? You know, it has a, 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 an aroma to it. Joe's, a, he worked paramedics and worked with blood. So he, he, he can tell you, life is in the blood, the scripture says, okay? Now, the blood is precious because when Adam and Eve committed sin, they turned into a different creature. They saw that they were naked. In other words, they were clothed in light like God. God is light, right? In him is no darkness at all. You're in God, so don't hang around anything dark. <laughs> anyway, right? God is light. And so they, they were like creatures. And when they fell, they came... They became what we are now, it's sensual, moved by our physical senses, creatures. Fear, frustration, separated from God. Now had to come up with our own answers. So God had compassion. See, God always has compassion. He doesn't write people off. Now, if you read the Old Testament, you've got to understand why God was so harsh in the Old Testament. Come to me and ask me. I haven't got time to cover it now. But the blood shielded. It shielded God from their sin. Did you know that? Adam and Eve had now sin in them. They had the nature of Satan in them. That's what sin is. Satan created sin. God didn't. Okay? And that sin is the nature of Satan. Okay? So we have that sin in our flesh. The only way for us to reduce that sin in our flesh is meet with God so he kills the weeds, <laughs> knocks them down. Can you say amen? Because this weed will be rejected at the resurrection. God will change it and make it into a new body. Can you say amen? And you won't have a wrinkle. There won't be a hair out like me. You won't be missing things. <laughs> Hello? Amen. So that blood is a shield. Okay, when we take communion and we sip the blood, the, that which represents the blood, we are honoring God in his shield. For the Lord is my shield and my buckler. Who can get to me? See, what Christians have been sold is religion. You know, and I'm not against other Christians, but you interview. I like to interview Christians and see what they know. You know, tell me about your Jesus. Tell me about your relationship. You know, have you got a good story to share? Of course you do. Tell me about, well, see, the blood of Jesus Christ shielded God from the sin nature coming off of Adam and Eve, but also shielded Adam and Eve from the glory of God that would have killed them. Because if you read the Old Testament, when they handled the Ark of the Covenant wrong, when they got into the presence, even the priest had to have a rope tied to his ankle. Just in case he wasn't right with God, when he fell over dead in there, nobody's going to go in and get him. They're going to pull him out. True story. I'm not lying to you. And so man is corrupt. We need a dose of God every day. We need to commune with God or talk with God during the day. He keeps us cleansed and washed in the blood. Can you say amen? I'll finish up with this scripture for you. If we walk in the light in God, as Christ is in the light... The blood of Jesus Christ continually is applied to us and cleansing us on a daily fashion. Jesus, when he spoke to his disciples, and you're going to get a good dose of the word today, he says, now you are clean through the word that I've spoken unto you. If any man speak, let him speak of the oracles of God, like the oracles of God. Oracle means speaker. You guys got speakers on your stereo? Okay, so I'm supposed to represent God and speak as much word as I can to you. It's close to the reality of the word without putting my opinion nor my religion beliefs in there. Can you say amen? How am I doing so far? All right, good. Keep praying for me. <laughs> you know, God says I've set up a banquet 
for you in the presence of your enemies. The enemies can't eat what you eat of. You eat of God, amen? But we show up to church, and we don't show up prepared. We got to show up prepared and hungry. Can you say amen? Some people show up to church, and they say, Pastor, feed me. I've got my plate. Fill it. Fill my plate. Hey, if you're coming to a banquet, don't grab the littlest plate, monkey. Get the big one. Get the big one. I, I, I serve meals here. I serve the word here. Don't show up like this. Get your notes out and get everything. Can you say, man, I'm just trying to dig you a little bit. They make you realize that God will fill as much as you can believe for. God is never going to say, not today, Peggy. Amen. All right, so you ready? Let's get into this thing. We've been studying on the new creation realities. We're going to subtitle this, The Body of Christ. The Body of Christ. We have a scripture that we're going to read to start us off in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 18 and 19. Oh, I love the background of that, you guys. But now, read along. You don't have to read out loud, but read, read with me. But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body. Who puts us in the body? Who makes us an arm? Who makes us a, 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 an elbow? Who makes us a foot? Who makes us an eye? We don't make ourselves that. Okay. And it says, and if they were all one member, where would the body be? Say amen, somebody. So greetings to you this morning, family. Today we're going to give you some insight about the body of Christ and why we see a lot of problems in the body. First of all, when my head sits on my body, right? Let's not be really on your neck, on your shoulder. No, it sits on my body. Jesus is the head of the what? Body. So can you separate or should you separate the head from the body? That's what happens when you start doing your own thing without praying and asking God. You start to separate out from the body. Now, you, you don't leave the body. You're just out of fellowship. Hello? So you need to realize that the body of Christ is the thing that God is concerned about in the earth. First of all, when Linda and I got married, God told me, he says, son, this is my daughter. Folks, how would you like to know? This is my daughter. Take good care of her. Treat her well. Because I don't take lightly of those that cannot treat my children right now let's move that out of that setting okay and, and think about all the different kinds of churches that are out there that really love jesus now i'm talking about the churches that love jesus some of them got some weird stuff should we have to criticize about them no because who does a body belong to the point i want to really make under underscoring point is that hands off of God's property and one of Satan's greatest tricks is to get you to comment negatively about another Christian. Don't do it. Just resist that. Amen. Oh, there's plenty to say about Terry, but I'm going to just pray. You understand? Because God did not set us up to be judges in the New Testament. He set us up to be lovers and a witness. To tell people of the glorious salvation of Jesus Christ. And how can we do that if we're always fighting to keep our head above water? Let me say this to you. And it's something for you to meditate on. Some people have faith only enough to stay out of hell. But they don't have enough faith to live a victorious life. And I want to tell you, here you will. Because faith comes by. And hearing by the. Amen. And everything that I've committed to and my wife have committed to this the following year is to give you the pure word of God as much as we can and to give you a, an ability to understand it and the kingdom and its principles so that you can walk a full, victorious life. I didn't say you would have, wouldn't have any problems. I just say you would look at them differently and deal with them differently. And you say, man, if Satan realizes he can't upset you, he's going to back away a little bit until he can find a time to do it. So when Jesus tempted, uh, excuse me, when Satan tempted Jesus, 
Boy, I had him different there. When Satan tempted Jesus, and Jesus didn't bow to any of his junk, it says that he left. Satan left to find a more opportune time to come back. So, folks, Christians, the enemy isn't going to leave you alone, but beat the tar out of him every time he sticks his head in your business. Whack him with Jesus. You got the whack about hammer. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Whack. <laughs> Come on, man. Are you with me? And so God wants us victorious. He wants us walking. He wants to understand the body of Christ. So, folks, God considers his body holy. Is God holy? Okay. We are the body of Christ. He is the head and we are the. So we're connected. Can you say Amen. This is why in the New Testament, God doesn't send you through the mud and the flood and the crud. Okay, why? Because God's inside of you, and if you're listening to him, he'll teach you to pick up your butt. <laughs> Don't fall over the log. <laughs> but what people aren't teaching the body of Christ is how valuable to God you really are. You're so valuable to God. You all, you all are what he's only got in the earth. So we got to get serious sometime. We got to find out exactly how things work and put it on the old slug. I can pull out my salt shaker and just watch that bugger shrivel up. That's what the word of God is. It's like salt. And it says that we are the salt of the earth. That's why, because we're supposed to be filled with the word of God. Amen. All right. Say, I got that. All right, so we are the body of Christ, so we want to go to uh, Colossians chapter 1, please. Look at verse, starting at verse 12 through 18. You see, we are God's expression in the earth. You go to Colossians chapter 1, 12. Okay, we actually are his arms and his legs. We're his eyes and his ears, even though I know it's only a, a metaphor. But we're connected to God. Can you say amen? And God's connected to us. So what happens? Remember what God said to Paul on the, the road to D Damascus? He knocked him off his high horse and he showed up. Paul saw a light and he heard a voice, remember? And he says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He says, who are you, Lord? He says, you've done it unto a Christian, you've done it unto me. We know what the scripture says in Matthew 25. It says, when have I not fed you when have i not visited you when you're in prison when you have done it not to one of the least of these our job is to love and to care and share jesus can you say amen and to enjoy the full life that god has given us now i don't walk around even though i'm a minister sharing jesus i talk about other things and all but i don't compromise my compensation and i've made a commitment in my heart god's helping me to leave you with the thoughts of God after our conversation. We're going to talk about fishing. We're going to leave with the thought of God as we break off our conversation. Leave gifts with people. Those gifts are good words and encouragement. Pray for those you love. Can you say amen? All right, so let's look at this. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in where? Yeah, you're in light. So that, that's what you see. I can't see any light I'm in. See, that's because you're in the natural. The natural man doesn't receive the things of the spirit. But we're spiritual also. You are covered in a dome of light. Did you know that? Until you start acting out in the flesh. Then the light dims. And the enemy says, oh, that's scary. <laughs> I know it bothers Carrie. Let's set it up. Let's knock out the water bib in this house when he's on vacation. <laughs> Whoa. Hello. That's how the enemy thinks. He's devious. He's a con otters. He lies. He cheats. But he doesn't have any supernatural power. He can't show up in your living room and go boo, 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 boo. Uh -uh. He can't get anywhere around you because you're clothed in light. Say amen. amen. Look at your neighbor. Say you're clothed in light. Turn it down. <laughs> I should pull out my, my, my sunglasses and go, wow, you guys are doing good today. <laughs> That's what Satan sees. You don't see it. 
But he sees all of that. He knows how you've been doing. Because you're like a vessel, folks. How many know that you can have a glass half full or you can fill the way all the way up? Amen? You're a glass, a vessel. Be filled. Get filled. Amen? You don't have to pay for it. It's paid for. So what's stopping you? You! I'm unworthy, Sherry. I'm unworthy. Who told you that? Satan. If God thought we were unworthy, he would never have sent his son to redeem us. So stop talking that way. Say amen. amen. You guys are wonderful. All right, so let's get into this. Okay. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. Say the word, I've been delivered. delivered. Darkness has no more pull over you unless you dwell on it. Let me tell you one more thing about the devil. If that you don't have to be concerned about what he does if he starts showing his head to sick Jesus on him. But he's very interested in getting our attention. So if you're curious about him, he'll feed the curiosity. You follow what I'm saying? If we're looking into, remember, you can go back about five, seven years ago and they had all of those Ghostbusters you know, we're finding the ghosts and listen to the paranormal and the supernatural. You don't see a lot of that anymore. You know what happened? Those ghosts followed them home. You don't pry into the Satan without him prying back into you. I'm telling you, and several of you need to listen to this. Okay? That's why you're covered so well. You're covered in light. So right now, he's running loose in the planet. Look at the mess he's made. This planet is a mess because men are listening to his suggestion. Did you see that statue they erected to Guinness Gainsborough? It looks like a satanic statue with horn rams and they tore down one of our presidents to stick this demented spirit up. Folks, the world is getting ready to completely corrupt. Just before it does, we're going up. And then the devil's going to show up. We go up because we're resisting the enemy. And once we go up, he'll show up. Only he who will let until he be taken out of the way. The he there is not the Holy Spirit because people are saved during the tribulation. It is the church of Jesus Christ. We are withholding. So get to praying. You can change whole entire townships by praying for them. I like to have some of you, I've been sending out little clips on revivals. There's another clip I got on revival. This one was done in Korea in 1907. And what happened, you would, wouldn't believe. We had the same ability that they had back then, we have now. The, the problem is there's not the right formulas. Christians need to keep their eyes off of everybody but God. Okay, you go into a, any kind of a church nowadays and somebody's over here because they don't like the person over there. And I got, and I'm not trying to run that down. I'm just trying to say, say it's a master at stealing our power and our effect. Hello. God is a master at restoring us and giving us a voice. Can you say amen? So let me finish reading this because it only gets better from here. And it goes like this, and it says, He's delivered us from the power of darkness and, and translated us or conveyed us into the kingdom of his son. What kingdom are we in? That means that if anybody wants to attack that kingdom, they have to go through the sun. And the sun's already won. So it's a safe place to be. Amen. And so if you want to know more about the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, they're actually this of the same, but they're different. Come, we'll share we, have, we usually have a dinner after our service. Great time to hit Pastor up with all kinds of questions. Write them down. So you have a reference that you can go to. All right, now I sound like I, you know, I'm a know-it-all, but I'm not a know-it-all. But I had lots of questions myself. And I know by asking questions, we get to the point of knowing. Hello. 
will this car actually run when I buy it? <laughs> Hello? Never got the joke. All right. Let's move on. Then he says on this, it says, he says, and in whom we have redemption or purchased through the blood and forgiveness of sin. Say, I'm forgiven. Verse 16, or verse 15, excuse me. He is the image of the invisible God. See, Jesus is the very spit image of his Father and of the Holy Spirit. The firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether there be thrones, dominions, principalities, or powers. All things were created through him and for him. Now, you want to know why the Father is so important that we love God, his son, Jesus Christ. And he is before all things, and in him all things are held together, consist. And he, now look at this next phrase, and he is the head of the body, the church. How many here know what the word church means? It's the Greek word, here's your Greek lesson for today. It's the Greek word, ecclesia. You spell it however you want. Okay, Ecclesia. It means the call, called out ones. Called out. Called out from what? From the world into Christ. The church has been called out of the world and into Christ. So we're set aside. We're holy unto God. Say amen. Now, I don't know about you. How many's ever slept on their arm, woke up the next morning and it was asleep? And you went to scratch your head and you thought you were hitting yourself with some kind of crazy. Amen. Well, look at the body of Christ. How many arms are dysfunctional? How many legs are not working? How many eyes are closed they don't see? But not your eyes, not your feet. Because you're connected with God and you have a fellowship with him daily. And that keeps you alive and vibrant. Can you say amen? He's the head of the body and we are the body. Say amen. So you're connected to Jesus Christ. Wow. Wow completely irritate the devil how could they be connected to jesus i thought jesus was going to give this planet to me and he gave it to those inferior humans <laughs> we're not inferior we're actually more intelligent and more blessed because we're made in god's image after his likeness we were discussing I'm, I, i've got some new stuff that i'm going to be sharing with you it's been in the bible forever but you see, God, when God created everything, he created it with light, words, and tone. And see, when we get all disjointed, how's our tone say? Hello? When you're upset, right? We run on the spirit, the fruit of the spirit, or the tones of the flesh. Which one do you think is best? Fruit of the Spirit, which is Christ. Amen. You see, it's not fruits of the Spirit are. It's fruit of the Spirit is. Jesus is that fruit, but he's expressed in love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, and faithfulness. That's all nine. <laughs> so if you are loving God, you're going to be one of the most loving people I know. Christy's a good example of that. Sherry, both Sherry's here are good examples of that. Bubbling and all that kind of stuff. Satan hates that. Maintain it. Just drive them nuts. Amen. Amen. Get after God and drive him nuts. Everybody says, well, these are the last days. Perilous times are coming. Yeah, but guess what? We're driving the devil nuts. <laughs> How dare you talk to the devil that way, Pastor Kerry? How come you're not? How come you're not putting him in his place? He lost. He lost over 2,000 years ago. And what we got is a big, piping, bullhard liar who's very inept at knowing how to get to you. Because he helped raise you when you were a kid. He sent one little limp. Get with Kerry. And try to keep him away from getting saved. I could tell you through my childhood all these weird things that happened and these God things that happened. I wasn't saved. When I first got saved, you know what I saw? A three-headed snake coming right out of, the, out of the ground, right at me. And says, don't you go another step further. He was threatening me from becoming a minister. 
So if you've never had anything like that, don't believe for it. But anyway, certain people have certain calls. So let's get into this. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. See, I'm a child of God. I am created by God, and I am maintained by God. All right, here's what we're going to cover rather quickly, but we'll cover this today. And number one, there is only one body of Christ. Has many different names, folks. But remember what I taught you. Satan loves division. So the Baptists don't get along with the Catholics, and the Catholics don't get along with this, and that. He creates the dissension because he feeds on it like a, a vampire does. So there's only one body. So somebody says, oh, my church, and I did this, and my church, and which is okay. Just so, wow, yeah, I love my church. You don't go to my church. Yes, I do. Well, you're not in the building. That's not the church. The building's the house of the Lord. The church is you. And I belong to you and you belong to me. Another person said to me, well, Pastor Kerry, now that you failed and God is picking you up again, you lost all your rewards. I said, no, I didn't lose all my rewards. And here's another thing God showed me. He says, if I lead you to the Lord and you lead thousands to the Lord, I get credit for all those thousands you led to the Lord because I led you to the Lord. You see what I'm saying? Look at the rewards Billy Graham's got. He doesn't even know all those people. But because he was faithful, because he was faithful, consistent, consistent, faithful, God built up this, this anointing. He'll do the same thing for you. He is no respecter of persons. You might have a different calling than I do. And you might have a different position and body function as God purposed in his heart to make you, being an arm or a leg. But each of us are of the same value because we belong to the body of. So do yourself a favor. Do not criticize other parts of the body of Christ. Do your best. Say, God, help me with that. Because you'll find out once you shut that down, about one eighth of your problems go away because we provoke with our words. Yeah, I don't like that preacher. All he does is preach mamby pamby, and he doesn't even pray in the name of Jesus. Should I be saying something like that? Not at all. So avoid that. Believe me, you'll be happier. I mean, we have all kinds of temptations to make comments. Avoid it. If you can't comment on a good thing, don't say it. Find something good. Well, pastor, you irritated me so bad today. I, I, I like you here, though. Boy, don't you smell good, you're a rat. <laughs> Hello. I'm glad you guys can laugh a little. Amen. So we're going to cover, there's only one body, and that's the church. We're all part of that one self-same body. Don't let anybody divide you away from, you don't go to our church. That doesn't matter. I'm a part of the body of Christ. See, sometimes people just need to grow up. Let's move on. Second, we're going to cover... We were all by one spirit baptized into the body. It's a, called the mystery of godliness. When we accepted Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit put us into the body of Christ. Later on, when we got filled with the spirit, Jesus puts us into the Holy Spirit. It's called the mystery of godliness. A bucket within a bucket. Amen. So, we want to stay filled all day long. I want the fire burning in me hot. So if I get any polywogs or anything, I'll wipe them out before they get a chance to lay eggs. <laughs> you know, you can't stop the birds from flying over your head. Christy will like this one. But you can keep them from nesting in your hair. <laughs> Amen. You don't have to think those thoughts. You don't have to, you're in control with God. The idea is the, the serpent's got so many mind games. He's a mind game player. That's his favorite realm, to get in your head and make you dead. Look what Cain did to Abel. So everyone say, Cain and Abel. And Abel. Pinch your flesh and say, Cain, Cain. and say, Abel. Abel. That's right. Your spirit and your soul is what's going to be redeemed. Your flesh is going to be changed. 
Do you do that periodically on purpose? She just loves to smell Pastor Kerry when I get over there. I'm not kidding. I bl bless you, BJ. <coughs> Are you following me? Third thing we'll cover is love and acceptance of each part within the body of Christ. Your job is not to understand what another person's part in the body is. It's to help them complete that part. And God's got some nice places for you to operate in, sister. And you've been wondering about that. So God wants to let you know. So, amen. I, want, I would like for all of you to be involved in some form of ministry. It helps us to sow and reap. You understand? Now, that doesn't mean you're going to be a preacher or, or anything like that. What it means is... What God made you to be, be the best you can be with his help. Remember, God never lets you do it alone. Ask for his help throughout the day. Can you say amen? You know, I'm a, I'm a pretty good drummer. Pretty good, but, you know, it's all a hobby now. But when I get on there and the anointing hits me, I'm a really good drummer. See, that's how God works with us. If we just go through and we're pretty good people, it's great. But with God and his anointing working in us, you're pretty great and amazing people. And take the limits off. God can do exceedingly above and beyond anything you can even ask or think. Take the limits off in your thinking. As a man thinketh, so he becomes. I won't. And the last point is, we are called the church, the called out ones. Okay, point one. There's only one church. Everyone say one church. one church. Keeps me from division. So also, you notice that when you go to the store and, you, and the person notices you're a Christian and everything's cool until you bring up where you go to church. What is that? That's the devil working. I don't care what church you go to. As long as you're born again, you're saved, you love Jesus. Hello? I'd hope you'd come here. But, you know... There are wonderful churches all over the place and they love God and the people love God. They are our body. Amen. So there's only one church. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 1 through 6. Okay. Here Paul is talking to the, Ephesians, the church at Ephesus. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, he's in jail, by the way, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling to which you were called. What a calling is, is God calling you to be something for him, but he's already made you that something. He's calling you to be with him so he can show you what you are and show you how to take the steps to get there. Say amen. There's no safer, healthier place to be than that in the will of God. Because when you're walking God's will, God is walking with you. And if God is walking with you, how can the devil even tempt you? He's got to yell at you. Hey, look over here. Here I am. You're walking with Jesus. You don't even get pay attention to any of that stuff. It's the people that are curious that there might be something other out there are the ones that are always turning around and becoming a pillar of salt. Lot's wife. She, you see, the Egyptians held the Israelites captive for nearly 400 years, close to 400 or more, right? But when they got a chance to leave, did they leave? Yeah, yeah and they left quick, didn't they? Well, that's what happened to us. When we said, Jesus, come in my heart, forgive my sin, sin, we were translated out of darkness into light instantly. Say amen. amen. But folks, there's, there's a situation you need to be aware of and just mature about. You see, when the Israelites left Egypt, it was instantly. They just left real quickly. But it took them generations to get Egypt out of them. You and I have been translated out of darkness into light. It's going to take a little time to get the world out of us. Come on. It is. And only God can wash that out of us. 
So my encouraging you to be with him, he washes all of Every time you meet with God, he washes something out of you. Every time you meet with God, he puts something into you. Every time you meet with God, he removes stuff. He puts stuff in. Can you say amen? That's just one of the things that he does. But most Christians don't have much of a prayer life. Don't get mad at me. They don't. And you're, you're running on grace. Maybe grandma's prayers. Hello, mom's prayers. You better learn to pray. These are the last days. Perilous times are upon us. But it's the Christian that walks and talks with God that is strong and solid and cannot be moved. That's you. Now, you can either be a sloppy agape or you can be right on to it. Oh, bless the Lord. You know, I'm like that. You saw me up here dancing a little bit. I'm like that. But I'm not frivolously or foolishly. All right. One church. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, walk worthy of the calling to which you were called with all lowliness. Be humble, gentle, gentle with others, and long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring. To keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. The word bond there means glue. Therefore, there is one body. How many? One, body. one spirit. How many? One. Just as you're called and one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one father of all. And who is above all and through all and in you all. Yeah. Yeah. Paul's from the south. <laughs> So, the Father is in charge of everything. Jesus is the active member. And the Holy Spirit now is the third member of the Godhead in the earth, getting us to focus on Christ, getting us to be with Christ, so Christ carries us out. Can you say amen? So, when you start to sway a little bit, just pray. God will move you right back into sync. You know what it's like when your engine's out of tune? What do you do? You go get it checked. Christians today, they don't check up from the neck up. They don't go to God and they say, God, how am I doing? God, please, you know, fix me, adjust me, make me better. I want to be a better pastor. I want to be a better father. I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better grandpa, you see. In order for that to happen, I have reached my max. It takes God to bring me up higher. And you too. People say, well, we only use a certain part of our brain until you get into the presence of God and God takes the cap off. Then all of a sudden you start getting revelations and start picking up things. What's causing that? The presence of God. So if you feel like your mind's tired, get in the presence of God and God let move with a cap off of you. Remember, Adam and Eve put a cap on all of us. Put us in a realm that we were supposed to be here exposing us to the devil. Now, we get freedom in that by walking with Christ and meeting with Christ. And then he elevates us. How does he do that? He brings us up into the spirit realm before the throne of God. Hello? You know what I call the throne of God now? God's dressing room. God dresses me in, in my prayer time with God. He puts on the robes of righteousness, cleanses me from my sin, gives me some gas, <laughs> Holy Ghost, cleanses my flesh, reduces the weeds and the junk that come out of there, the crabby and the, the fleshliness, and then amplifies the spirit and the soul realm so I can walk and talk and fellowship of the spirit of God. You see? But see, you're not going to get that kind of teaching from the church. You do this and you do that. Be good to this and you'll get that. And you'll see the little lists, you know, that the churches are doing. And you get 20 minutes of psychology. But nobody says, who's going to help you do that? <laughs> who's nobody's teaching? Who helps you do that? God, let's get you with God. Let's get you so friendly and so loving of God that God instructs you about everything. Hello? Amen. And that's 
why we fellowship. That's why we have church. That's why we're together. So there's how many churches? So next time anybody wants to make a division about, I go to this church, I go there, just smile and say, you go to the same church I do, just a different building. Hello. And why do we let things and buildings separate us? Moving right along. We should know by now how to walk with Christ and stay out of the flesh, the natural realm. Say amen. This is walking worthy of the Lord, just to walk in the spirit, to walk in the, in the Lord. Two, we should be humble when we approach God. God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble, right? What did Satan fall from? Pride. The moment you start producing pride, the moment everything stops until you're done with your tantrum. Every argument has to do with pride. Because only God is right. You think about some of this stuff that I'm sharing, how foolish it is to argue about something. Because nobody wins. We're both foolish for arguing. It's all, this is what I call the serpent's game. The tricks of the serpent. And he gets you to oppose yourself. Well, let's move past this and look at something else. We're all baptized by the same spirit into the body of Christ, which means God makes us a foot, an eye, a hand. Can you say amen? What does a foot do? It walks, carries things. Joe's a foot. He carries people from one place to the next. You see how important he is? And Denise's wife, I can do it. She's a hand. She's always given a hand. These things are not hard to understand. So they need to be supported. But if the hand is doing something like the foot's supposed to be doing, then the hand needs to be corrected. Hello. And if I'm an eye, I need to be allowed to see. And if you are lips, you'll be allowed to speak. So each one of us has been placed in the body of Christ supernaturally by the Spirit to operate a total witness about God. Can you say amen? So if you're an eye, don't try to be a foot. If you're an ear, don't say to the lips, shut up. Now, you and I are supposed to love and encourage the body as we grow up into ourselves and become very viable parts of Christ's body. Can you say Amen. Not pew owners, active parts of the body of Christ. So we're baptized into one body. Listen to this. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 again through 14. And it says, For as one body, excuse me, for as the body is one and has many members, high members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are still one body. That means hands off. Encourage, you know, build up, keep the nags down. Can you say amen? Church is not a place to change your diaper. It's not a laundromat. Church is a training center. You come, you leave your flesh at home, your problems at home, you go to God about them. You come to church to learn, to fellowship, and to grow. Well, I thought church was coming in and Telling the pastor what my husband's doing, and I look down, but don't. No, that's a laundry mat. You got it mixed up. <laughs> and see, that's what people, when people are in charge without God in there, we're going to mess it up. Even a, as good as we are, Sherry, we're going to mess it up without God's help. And the quicker we learn that, the quicker we understand that, the better off we'll be. And the more functioning we'll be together and revival will break out. You see, if my arm doesn't do what my head tells it, my arm is dysfunctional. Many bodies or sections of the body of Christ are very dysfunctional because all they think about is getting their own needs met. Now listen, I'm not picking, I'm just trying to show you how that devil works. And trying to get, keep their head above water. And trying to just maintain and maintain and maintain. And yet, all of that Jesus takes care of. You go to him in prayer and give it to him. 
casting all of your care over on the Lord, for he cares for you. You know, I want to cast my care over on the Lord, right? Here, Lord, take my care. Come on, take it. Well, I know that. Never mind. Just act. Time to take this. If I don't let go, you won't get it. We think we give something to the Lord, and then we take it right back and talk about it. Move it right on. <laughs> don't throw nothing. All right. So we're by one spirit baptized into one body. So also is Christ. For by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jewish, Greeks, whether we be slaves, free, female, whatever. We're all one and a part of the body of Christ. None of us is more valuable than the other. That's why a pastor should not be thought of as a position, just an office. Hello? Okay? Because you go to a school and it says principal's office, but a different principal could be in there. So God has offices. Everything functional and has an office and there's an anointing to go with every one of the gifts. If you're a foot, then you've got foot anointing. You don't have to get... You know, fungus among us. <laughs> and if your hand, you got hand anointing. And if your eyes, you got seeing anointing. You could see things that people can't see. God has put them in the body to make the body functional and whole. Say amen. Now we're missing some parts, folks. We need a Sunday school, a, a children's pastor. I'll train them if we can't find one. And it's fun working with kids. A lot easier than adults. Amen. Okay? Amen. It is. It just is. Yes. And they don't have a short expanse. So you only have 10, 15 minutes of Bible, then a little kind of project, and then pray together and do so. That's it. It's so fun and easy. I started off as a youth pastor up on the highlands in Renton, in the hood. Started off by sharing Jesus. By the time I was done with that work and gave it to somebody else, we had over 100 kids. See, you know, but my life's been kicked around a lot. You know, I've gone through my, my, a lot of stuff myself, so don't think that I haven't. But what's so neat is God is so willing to help us help others if we just get our eyes off of ourselves. Amen. See, you'll never argue or fight and be stubborn and act nasty if you die to yourself on a daily basis. Wouldn't that be fun? Got a husband that really is nice. <laughs> Moving around, I don't want to go there. Okay. All right, so listen to this. This is Galatians 3.27. I'll throw it out there under that point. We're all baptized into one body. It says, for as many as you are baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So, again, when you say, Jesus, forgive me of my sin, come into my heart, and be my Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit takes you and puts you into Christ and makes you an arm, a finger, an ear, an eye. And he says, now, seek me, and I will open up all these things that you have need of. What's it say? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be What? Yeah, so stop trying to get them yourself. You pursue God and he'll bring them to you. Ding, 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 ding. That's worth a million dollars. Because we're always trying to help God, aren't we? Just don't get ahead of him. Couple points. We should know Jesus is not divided. Neither should the body of Christ be divided. Say Amen. Each member is anointed, placed in the body as it pleases God. Take your hands off of them. Love them and encourage them. If they're doing wrong, let the pastor correct. Hello. Quick little insight. If you're going to marry a man, make sure the man has more spirituality than you do. Amen. Don't marry a baby in Christ. Because you'll end up being his mom. Hello. And if you got some husband or wife, you throw it on the other side, same thing. You can marry a, a younger woman in the Lord, 
because the man is the head of the woman, okay? Not spiritually, but physically. Who's the head? Of, we should read that part, so I don't want to get you guys get mad at me. But see, like a kitchen. How many know that the stove is important in the kitchen? How many know the refrigerator is important in the kitchen? And if you have one, the dishwasher is important. So there's a lot of different gifts and parts in the kitchen. Can you say amen? Each one is needed. So even though the man might be the stove and the woman something else is valuable, we have our own function. Can you say amen? And that's what you need to be aware of. Pray for each person to function within the calling to which they were functioning and to become mature in that calling. Say amen. amen. There is only one body and many different members, whether we are arms, eyes, ears, feet. We are all placed in the body by God and we're all God's property. Say amen. Now, first, next point. Love and acceptance for each part. First Corinthians 12, same chapter. Go down to verse 15. I got the hiccup, so I got to drink some instant breakfast. Okay. So it says, if the foot should say, because I am not the hand, is it not of the body? Hello. Here's the deal. There's two looks at this. One is the self look. I'm not an eye, so I maybe not part of the body. I'm not an ear. I'm unworthy. Have you ever heard this? I'm too old to be a minister now. I'm this and I'm that and I'm this. No, no. So there are people who are down on themselves, will never fulfill the calling in their life because they'll never believe that they can do it. The folks, the answer to that is you can't. God in you does the work. So you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Notice the word through, through. If I come through that door, what am I coming through? Duh, yes, of course. If I come to the Father through Christ, how am I coming to the Father? Christ is taking me there. So I go, Father, in Jesus' name, I come before you. As soon as you say, Father, in Jesus' name, God puts the armor on you. The Holy Spirit puts you in the hands of Christ, and Christ takes you up in a super elevator, and you're sitting right before the throne of God, all instantly. I like the pictures of it, and I like to describe it so you can see what happens. Oh, yeah. I've seen so many wonderful things. One time I was praying and the whole room disappeared. It was just me and God. And you know what I felt like? I felt like crawling under the bed. It was so holy and so, ah, oh, oh, oh. Your flesh naturally wants to cower. You'll look at and you'll read it in the Testaments and in, in the book Acts. You'll see when flesh came in, in touch with God, flesh fell over, slayed in the spirit. Do we have that here? Yes, we do. Do we... We have the fullness of the Holy Ghost here? Yes, we do. I just haven't a chance to preach about it yet. <laughs> Amen. So we are very supernatural people. But if you're an I and think you don't fit in the body, see, there you go thinking again. And if you judge others, you cannot say, we have no need of you. We have need of you. You are here because God has need of you. Can you say Amen. And that's probably why you are here. God puts you into this body. Wonderful. Now you have to deal with me. You better pray. <laughs> Yesterday I showed up at the woman's thing and I didn't shave. I hadn't shaved in a couple of days. Wearing all my scrubbies and everything. And I me two wonderful new people. Hi, he's the pastor. <laughs> Do you realize... Do you realize that we don't look at the outward man? We look at the inward man. And I have a teaching that I did a while ago, and I'm Sherry and a bunch of people from the house. We taught them that we know no man after the flesh. Even though we have known Christ after the flesh, we don't know him like that anymore. 
We know him after the spirit as being God. So therefore, we take our eyes off of each other and know, don't know a person by their mistakes or by their bad habits. You know a person by the potential love and the love of God that flows towards them. When you start being that way, people will start getting saved. Because they can sense when you're at odds with them. You sinner! I'm coming to tell you the truth. <laughs> right? And they're running. All right. Are you still with me? All right, so we're all baptized into the body. God did that, didn't he? And we're to love and accept. So if the foot should say, because I am not the hand, am I not of the body? What's the answer? Is it not of the body? No. And if the ear should say, because I am not of the eye, I am not of the body? Is it therefore not of the body? No, it's part of the body. And if the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? And the whole body be the hearing, where would be the smelling? Yeah, where would be that smelling? And then, 18, but now God has set members, each one of them, in the body as it pleases him. And they all were as one member in one body. You see, so unity is more important than anything else. You see, one can put a thousand to flight. Then I get several of you to agree with me. Each person that you agree on the thing, and you add another person in agreement, you just ten times it. One could put a thousand to flight. Two could put ten thousand to flight. Three can put a hundred thousand. Four can put a million. And it keeps adding. That's why Satan fights against unity, fights against individuality. Our job is not to be the best we can do in spite of all the rest of you. <laughs> Our job is to compliment one another, love one another. And if they're broken, we give them better honor. If they're lacking in an area, we don't say, you're lacking in an area. No, you go in and you make up that difference. Those members which we think are less, we give more honor to. Those members that are okay, we honor them too. But the ones that are lacking, God gives them special graces and special love. Had a guy come in and he, and he said to me, oh, I wanted to punch him. Thank God I'm saved. He says, you know what's wrong with your church? You never come in and tell a pastor what's wrong with his church. First time you ever been with there. I says, no, tell me. He says, you got a bunch of poor people and a bunch of tards with you. Can you imagine a man of God saying that? I says, yeah, and I'm one of them, buddy. I need help. He suggested that I do this, and he suggested that I start believing from doctors and lawyers. Some of the wealthiest people I know are the most troubled because their money didn't give them salvation. Not all. I'm I've known some pretty wonderful millionaires. One of my friends down in California, his name is Jack French, he invented the packaging for the mustard packs and, and the ketchup packs. He made the machinery. He was a, and so he got all these millions of dollars and he set up a, a foundation and everything. So he's got all this money coming in, had another work in the day. He's a very talented man. He bends sheetrock. He made a, a, a hallway in his house with bent sheetrock, and that's a real art to moisten the sheetrock and get it to bend without breaking. Ah, wonderful man. Wonderful Christian man. Now, if I was to talk to him, you would find out he's been to hell and back at least a couple times, and some of you have too. But see, it's not where you've been. It's who you're with. Can you say amen? And we have a policy here, and, and Scott will agree with this. And it says, I don't care where you came from. I want to make sure you end up with the rest of us. So I don't want to know all your hideous past on the negus that you, that's tail bearing about yourself. Don't have to do that here. To hear you're accepted and you're loved until you become trouble, and then we'll try to help you. Okay, and we'll try to work with you. But if you're unworkable, I don't know, God's going to have to deal with you. But a pastor has two things, a rod and a staff. Can you say amen? Do you know what the rod's for? <laughs> to chase the enemy away. Back then when the wolves would come around, he'd flip the rod, 
and it would hit, cause, hit in front of the sheep, turn the sheep around, and cause the wolf to run off. And the staff has a crook on the end. And he's able to pull a sheep away from the water and do all these wonderful things. Now, if you heard this, you were lied to. Well, when a sheep keeps wandering away, the shepherd breaks its leg and throws it over its back, and the sheep will never learn to wander away from God again. Did you ever hear that? I got that in Bible college. I said, that's not right. God is not into breaking legs. And the professor wanted to argue with me. Well, that's Old Testament teaching. They didn't have God in their heart. And see, today, people are living in both houses. Old Testament is a house. It's the latter house. I mean, the early house. And the New Testament is the latter house. So, I could be living in my camper and going through camper Old Testament principles, or I could be living in my new mansion with servants, and everything is by command. Now, which house do you want to live in? Say New Testament. Yeah, give you the answers for you. <laughs> so when you're believing for things, God leading you through the mud and the crud is all Old Testament. You did that. You went into the mud. And then we said, God, why would you allow this to happen? And God says, get out of the Old Testament into the New and find out I didn't. I told you not to go there. <laughs> See, the New Testament takes all of the confusion where everything was a mystery and brings it down and reveals it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Our job is to meet with God so we understand how to work with God and not work against them. Have you ever seen Christians that are contrary to themselves? I don't know. I don't want to go there. Oh, my. A couple of points. The body of Christ must work together. We need each other, and we need each other's parts. Amen. I need your ears. You need my eyes. I need your foot. You need your hands. You see what I'm saying? But don't try to be something you're not. If you're not good with children, don't volunteer for the nursery. If you're not very good at organizing, don't become an organizer. Find your niche and just let God put you in it. Say amen. And some of you are so new, you don't know what that is yet. So you will. Best thing you do is just get busy trying different things and let God guide you. If the boat is not moving, you can't be steered. Yeah. If we're just sitting idle... You're sitting idle. You need to be in some kind of motion. You have routines for your work, all things you go through. Bring God in all those routines and keep it moving. And God will begin to move you into the place you're supposed to be. Say amen. amen. But if you try to be something, you're going to fail at it. If you hate carpentry, don't try to build something. Amen. If you're not very good at leveling, don't level stuff. It's easy. Find somebody who's good at it. Yeah. And don't get mad at me. Oh, he's talking about me. No, I'm not. But then I am. <coughs> All right. Excuse me. Each part is so important to God. Great value. So please respect one another. Say amen. And final last point. Oh my gosh, she talks a whole lot. Ugh. Our last point is, the body is the church, the called out ones. So back to 1 Corinthians 12 really quickly, just so we can see it. 1 Corinthians 12 is great for this. And it says, by now indeed, there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Go ahead, eye, who's going to scratch you? <laughs> have you ever noticed about our body? You'll get goo all over your hands or something. And all of a sudden your nose or your eyes start itching. And you're going, what am I going to do? We're in the valley of decision. <laughs> Amen. Come on now. You got to laugh at yourself once in a while. You got to. I mean, gosh, we're some pretty strange people without God. All right. Now listen. It says... 
I have no need of you. Nor again can the head say to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. Say amen. amen. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor. And our unpresentable parts have greater modesty. 24, but our presentable parts have no need. See, because you guys are doing what you're supposed to do. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to the part which lacks. So if you're lacking something, God's going to help you. Why do we always get upset at somebody correcting us? Hey, do it this way. All right, uh, why did you say that to me? Because you need some help. <laughs> Hello, take it, learn, grow, have fun. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, what do we do? We bestow greater honor on them. We have a lot of elderly people here. Amen. Bestow greater honor on them. <laughs> what nobody told me, you know. Hello, are you with me? Yes. And why should we give greater honor to the part lacks? That there be no divisions in the body. That each member should have the same care one for another. And that that care for one for another will cause growth. Just in the last month and a half, we've had several visitors. We, had, um, uh, we have Andrew. We have Tim. We have Sherry. We have Christy. And we had two visitors yesterday. I was hoping they'd be here today. Of course, some of them had to drive a little bit if they did. But you know what? God is adding to the church. Now, when God adds to the church, imagine in your mind, I'll finish with this. Imagine in your mind the church being a drinking hole. A pristine aquifer is so pure. And the water comes naturally out of the ground in a bubbling spring. Such thirst quenching and everything. And you're getting ready to, to just take a drink of it. And somebody throws a rock right in front of you and just muddies the whole thing up. And you go. That's what church is. It's a pristine drinking hole. Don't throw mud. Don't throw rocks. Love one another and drink drink. There's so much anointing in this room right now. Drink. Drink. This place is totally vibrating with the presence of God. Okay? And that's every Sunday. Not because I'm so special or we're so special, but because we pray. We want to know God. Woo. Glory to God. Listen, we have many members, but there's still only one body. And unity and harmony with God and with each other creates revival. Harmony with God and unity with God and with each other causes revival. Because as we get to agreement and go and concentrate on what God has called us to do, there's tons of anointing flowing through you because you're vessels of honor. God pours himself out of you. And as long with pouring himself down on you. So let's get some porn going on. And you'll say, well, how come we didn't have that at the beginning? Well, first of all, getting you here on time. Do, 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 do. And we have to work with those little things to get those things in line so that the unit works. Okay. So don't get mad at me if I come up to you and say, why are you always doing this? Don't think I'm picking on you personally. I want to know what kind of answer you have. Because maybe I could help you. Hello? All right. God forbid that the pastor help anybody. You seen that crazy guy? Amen. Take his picture and put it up on the back of a milk carton. All right. So let's, let's go on. All right. We are many, many members, but there's just only how many bodies? All right. So as each part that we are, your job is to find out where your place is. 
Now, how do I go about to just meet with God and say, Lord, what do you want me to do within this, this body? Is there something you want me to do and help me to do with all my heart? Now, remember, with a new level comes a new devil. Amen. So every time God exalts you, the enemy gets nervous. So he tries to get you just off of that. Get off of that. Stop being so faithful. Don't come to church. You've got too many problems. Stop that. Stop that. And we just keep growing and being consistent. Next thing you know, the devil's yelling at us from two blocks away because he can't get any closer. Consistency. Faithfulness. And finishing, Philippians 127. This is what God wants us to have. Revival's coming to us, folks. Amen. Revival's coming here. Yes. In this little place. Like Azusa Street. God always takes the obscure to pronounce his glory. We're obscure. So it's the ends of the earth, right? Puyallup. Down by the Jehovah Witness Convention Hall. <laughs> Somebody says... Where did you, why did God put you in the church that he put me? He says, he put me right next to hell's gate. Because he knows what kind of person I am. Hello. Amen. All right. So here's the scripture. Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ. So that whether I come, Paul says, and see you or I am absent, I may hear of your affairs. That you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the one faith of the gospel. That's what we should be focusing on. Not what the church is doing wrong down the street. Not which is on the, you know, there's all kinds. Did you know back in the day when I started preaching on the radio? Anybody that had money could get on the radio. And there was some pretty weird people on there. Yeah. Yeah, I'll sell you for $10 a red string where it'll chase all your devils away. Yeah. True advertisement. One guy, he says, I got a sack. It's a money sack. And he says, you're supposed to take out your last bits of money and shove it in the sack and send them to me and God will start bringing money to you. That, yeah, do you see all that kind of crazy stuff? And so I heard that. And I'm a very practical man. I'm Scott will tell you, he knows a little bit about me. You guys know me too. And I'm saying, well, he's hurting for money. And he just got through saying, if you don't send in your offering, he's going to go under. Why doesn't he use a sack? <laughs> Come on, why aren't you using the sack, buddy? You're trying to sell some stringer sack? There's a lot of shenanigans out there. Just remember, if you're focusing and you're being consistent with God, you're going to live a full, blessed life. And like what God said to Sherry earlier, he'll say it to you. He hasn't brought you this far to end your life. Sickness is not from him. Depression is not from him. None of these things that pull and discourage you are from him. He's the God of your salvation. He's the God of your joy. He's the peace that passes understanding. He's the love that passes knowledge. He's everything you ever wanted and more. All you got to do is embrace him and love and be with him daily. And he will show you all these wonderful things. It actually says he will give you a tour of the kingdom. Yeah, 2 Peter chapter 1. That the Holy Spirit will give you a tour into the kingdom, the everlasting kingdom of God. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been on a few tours. I was in Israel. I loved the fact that somebody got me a gift to go to Israel. And we were on a tour. That means they, they took us in and showed us things. And our tour only had 30 people in it. Most of them are 500 and more. So you can only go to the, quote, places that 500 people can go to. But we only have 30, so we went to David's tomb. We went to the upper room. We went up on Masada, where the last battle of the Israelites were. All kinds of great things. I saw the pool of Bethesda. All of these wonderful things. God wants to show you his, his kingdom just like that. 
He wants to show you how the Holy Spirit functions and operates. He wants to open your eyes to the wisdom and how it can flow through you. He says wisdom in your heart is like deep well, well springs of water. But a man or woman of understanding will know how to draw it out. If you got something out of this morning, we give you Lord a hand clap. Amen.